Good morning, friends, and welcome to today's very special uh, Cichlids and Coffee, where we uh, talk about and unveil this beautiful uh, monster on my right here, the 300-gallon custom tank from, uh, from Glass Cages over in Dixon, Tennessee. I am just so happy and excited, and I feel like I just jump inside of it and swim, and biggest tank I've ever had, and just sitting in front of it last night and immersing myself in it was so pleasurable. I have a special video for you that's going to get into all the details, and uh, as well as a full fish room walkthrough like I normally do on those videos I prepare for the cichlids and coffee live stream. Big welcome to everybody who's here. What do we got here? Cat Sailor was uh, first. Hey, Cat Sailor. Good to see you, my friend. And who else do we have here? Twisted Adjust. What a name. What a great name. <laughs> Twisted Adjust. Hey, Kenneth. Kenneth is here. And Sunder. Hey, Sunder. Glad you're here, my friend. And Chris G. I'm scrolling through the chat. Tony Punch. Is that your uh, your real name, Tony? Tony Punch? That's a cool name if it is. Maybe you're a, or maybe you're a boxer. I don't know. Fish Ranch, love that name, Fish Ranch. And hey Trent. Trent and W. Good morning to you as well. And Brock G is in the house. Hello, Brock G. All right. Z Zip. Davy Larson. Hey Jerry. Good to see you, buddy. Glad you're here. Hey, Bob H., I'd love to go to Chicago, Bob, but um, not in the budget right this moment. But thank you for uh, for asking. Hey, GP, Neil is here, Neil Graysmark, and thank you, Neil. I'm glad you could make it. I appreciate that. And Robin is here from North Carolina. Not too far, Robin. I love North Carolina. I've been there several times. Michael Machos, hello to you, my friend. Brandon Wood is in the house. The General PZ. I just love these uh, YouTube names. The General is in the house. Jay uh, Perillas here. Yo, from New Hampshire. Pretty country up there. And Emma. Emma's here. And I saw somebody from Denmark. There's Trav. Trav, the cyclic keeper. Donna Vitrano is here. Donna, I'm glad you're here, and I hope that your knee is feeling strong and better. Michael Lotinero. All right. Well, I'm going to get, let, let's get into it. Otherwise, I'll be saying hello to, for an hour here. And, uh, you know, I love all you guys, and I love that you spend an hour with me on Saturdays. And, uh, hey, Twisted Adjust, you're not going to be uh, disappointed. She say makes wonderful products. Uh, just as a side note, I have two. Uh, she say uh, five point zero synchro pumps, moving water from the sump up to the tank, and it's coming out of the back rear corners through what is called lock line that you can twist and move in any direction you want. The flow comes to the middle from both sides. Uh, and it creates a bit of a confluence, right? The water comes together and then then just rolls and then comes back to the intake for the FX6 and the intake for the uh, Synergy Reef Systems overflow box at the back middle of the tank. So um, I'm a big uh, Shisei guy. Also, uh, Shisei 9.0 is what's uh, the heart of, of the uh, 210 that's going to become a South American tank. So <clears throat> I'm a, a big she say guy. So let's see who else is on here. Zizip, I said, Davy Larson, yep. Neil, yep, 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 yep. And Brandon, did I say, who did I miss? Dave Rice. So many great people. Peas and haps forever. All right. Robert is here. Hey, Robert. Glad you're here, buddy. Michael Evans in the house from Baltimore. I used to go to Baltimore, stay in the Inner Harbor. Beautiful location. Blazik Machowski. Blazik. Oh, man, I'm butchering that, I'm sure. But 
Hello to you, my friend. I'm glad you're here. So let's go ahead and do the uh, the official the official start of the live stream. If you're new to the channel and you think you get something out of it of value, please don't forget to hit that bell, thumbs up, and subscribe. I appreciate that very much if you haven't done it already. We're trying to get the channel over 50,000, and that is going to be epic. Quick shout out to my wonderful moderators, the best on YouTube, and also to the Cichlid Shack, a sponsor of the channel. Uh, if you get fish from the Cichlid Shack, every fish in this tank is from the Cichlid Shack. If you get fish from the Cichlid Shack, be sure to use Shack Attack 15 for 15% 15 off on fish orders over $100, and Shack Attack 10 for all of your food and supplies. The discounts don't apply to shipping because he simply passes the cost uh, directly to you for the shipping. Today's cup complements of the wonder of cichlids. Beautiful cup. Love this cup. And let's see here. Jerry, were you here last week? I was using your cup. And uh, what is this? Gala Aquatic and Pets comes in with a super chat. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate that. Every little bit helps. Now, um, a quick, quick announcement. The biggest super chat today in, in U.S. dollars, the biggest super chat in U.S. dollars today is going to be able to go to my, uh, to my Teespring, Teespring uh, store and pick any item they like, from a hoodie to a tee to a mug, whatever you like, just to celebrate everything here. Uh, biggest, biggest, uh, now, unfortunately, unfortunately, I can, I, I've got to limit that to people in the continental United States. I know I have people from all over the world, but the shipping just makes it ridiculous. So it's got to be within the, the lower 48 of the United States and, uh, and, but for this one, because it's Super Chats, moderators can participate if they like. Biggest Super Chat, pick any item you want from the Teespring store on me. I don't care if it's a hoodie, tea, mug, you get one item from the, uh, from the store. So just throw that out there, just part of the celebration. So be sure to visit the shack. Every, uh, every fish you see today will be a shack fish. Also, big shout out to Aquarium Co-op. They've been helping me along the way with uh, various items here and there, and I'm very appreciative to them. Also, a big uh, shout out to the members of the Garage Gang. Move this over here so I'm not in the way. These are the founding members of the Garage Gang. These are Patreon monthly supporters. If you'd like to know more information about that, uh, please just go to the uh, below every one of my videos and you'll see information on how to become a garage gang, a garage gang member. Also, if, uh, and just a couple more, a couple more plugs and we'll be, we'll be on our way. If, uh, if you would like to, uh, support the channel and use Amazon, visit my Amazon store. I have a lot of great product recommendations there, but also if you use that link, to get to Amazon and then buy anything on Amazon. Amazon will give a small percentage of the purchase to the channel. Very, very cool program that they offer there. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, I do have a Teespring store that you can visit. I'm moving the screen all around here, trying to get everything in position. But this Teespring store is available to you. I'll move the logo over here so it's easier to see. There we go. That Teespring store is available to, to you, and you can pick up teas and mugs and hoodies and things of this nature. And as I mentioned, uh, you any the biggest lot the biggest super chat today. And moderators, please keep track of it because I don't look at the chat constantly. But the biggest super chat today can pick any item they want from my Teespring store, and I will send it to you if you're in the lower 48 of the United States. And uh, 
Otherwise, the shipping gets too crazy. But any item you want will be available to you. So that's the end of commercials. But we got to keep the uh, keep the show running, and that does take some money. So <clears throat> I have a special video for you today that's going to get into some of the details. Uh, and then after that video, we can open this up to questions. And what do you think? You, you, you can see the tank behind me. If you had seen it about three or four days ago, it was it was very clouded up. And because I brought over more substrate to bring over more beneficial bacteria before bringing over the last wave of fish, and uh, it got very, very cloudy. And then I dropped three bags of Purigen that were sent to me by the aquarium co-op. That's what I mean by helping me out with items. And the aquarium co-op had sent me um, three bags of Purigen. Thank you to Zenzo, Candy, Corey, the whole crowd there at aquarium co-op. They're very helpful. And... Anyway, I, do, I did a time-lapse video. You can see it tomorrow morning. Uh, those of you who are uh, Patreons, the Patreons have already seen the, uh, uh, have already seen that video. I mean, they have access to it through the Patreon page. But the, uh, for the rest of you, you can see it tomorrow morning. I'll, I'll have it available at about uh, 7 a.m. Central Time. It'll be available. And it's a time-lapse of, uh, a speeded-up time-lapse of what the, the, um, what occurred in the tank after I added three bags of pyrogen over a relatively short period of time. And then the next day, it was even even better. So it, it's continuing to work. I'll leave it in the sump until it gets really brown and, and nasty. Then I'll just pull it out. And then I don't know if I'll recharge it or, or just toss it. Not really sure. Uh, we'll see. It can be recharged up to eight times. So um, anyway, good stuff. I like it. Now, can I get a uh, picture and AV check? Anybody can tell me about a picture and AV. How's the picture and how is the audio visual? Let me know. Hey, Cichlid King comes in with a super chat. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate that. And we're up to 97. I'll tell you what, when we hit 100, when we hit 100, we'll go ahead and start that special video. Jerry says he just put Purigen in his 125 South American. The stuff is the really deal. The, I mean, it's the real deal. I, I, I forgot because I, I, run, I run my tanks without chemical filtration. No charcoal, no chemipure, nothing. But that's more for a seasoned tank. It's more for a seasoned tank. Hey, Rico Stan comes in with a super chat. Thank you, my friend. It's true. I haven't seen you in a while, my friend. So I'm glad you're here. Now, I don't know if you missed it, but the biggest super chat today gets a, a pick of anything they want at my Teespring store. So stay, uh, stay alert. So <clears throat> audio and video are good. Thank you, James. I appreciate that. And Kent A. J. D. K. Hello from Denmark. Wow, that's amazing. Boy, I'd love to go there. Uh, Saren, Crisp AV. Thank you, my friend. Looks and sounds good. Excellent. Jerry, love your shows. Rico Stan. Yeah, Rico Stan is a co cool dude. Hey, looks like we hit 100 views, 100 people on. So let's go ahead and provide for you the special video that I made for today's live stream. You know how I like to do that. So um, let's do this. Well, the 300 gallon is up and running. It's dialed in and fully stocked and running very smoothly. Everything's working the way it's supposed to. Let's take a look at it. And as I tend to do on these videos, let's go ahead and take a look at the other fish as well. But let's go ahead and start with the 300 gallon, which has been just a, a labor of love and is now finally up and running. I'm going to turn off the lights here in the fish room so that we can uh, really see what's going on in there. So here it is. 300 gallon custom made aquarium from glass cages. There's no, um, no metal on the edges, just beveled glass. And there's no top frame. There's no real metal anywhere. It's all just beveled glass. And just a beautiful tank. 
and you can see all the fish have been put in the tank, all the African cichlids that I had before. This beautiful Malawi trout, Taiwan reef. In Cygnus, the Venusus, a beautiful giraffe hap. Some people call them a giraffe hap. Bicolor 500, the runt of the uh, of the tank. Autopharynx tetrastigma. Beautiful tangerine tiger. All these fish are from the cichlid shack in Tempe, Arizona. Stragatus, first cousin of an eye biter. Look at the anal fin on that fish, the egg, egg spots. Beautiful. Johnson eye. The living stone eye, Nimbocrombus, cousin of the Venusus. Sand diver, who was very difficult to catch in the 210 because he kept disappearing into the sand. Finally, I just filmed it. And I actually have a short video that I'll be releasing on him literally just disappearing in, in just a puff of smoke. I had to actually reach into the sand and, and grab his tail so he could come out. <laughs> just an amazing fish. And there's the turquoise hap. Getting more and more turquoise every day. Being photobombed by uh, the sand diver. Let's see, who am I missing here? Where's the, uh, there's the gar, that massive lower lip. They all think I'm gonna feed them, which I will when I'm done filming. I added more sand from the, uh, from the 210 Quite a bit, actually. Here's the uh, Lethronops oculatus. Lethronops oculatus. Really cute fish. And I'm surprised he's thriving in this tank with such uh, big and normally aggressive fish. But you see back there in the corner, the autopharynx tetrastigma was digging a hole back there. Here's the Malawi hawk. Can't forget the hawk. Very pretty fish. Very unusual uh, face. Aristochromus, because he looks down. He's part of the aristocracy. <laughs> I think I got, oh, no. Nope. There's the uh, Bucochromus. Bucochromus spectabilis. Fighting for position in case some food gets dropped in. Bucochromus spectabilis. I actually did a cichlid profile on him. Beautiful fish. They can get pretty big. I'm probably going to pull this plant out once things settle in and uh, give it a good cleaning. I usually dip them uh, or just leave them in a very light bleach solution overnight. Give them a good rinse the next day and then soak them for a day or two in, a, in water with, uh, with a little bit of conditioner, like Fritz Complete or Seachem Prime. So I'll probably swap that plant out. I've got a real nice clean one that I can put in, but I didn't want to disrupt too much, seeing how everybody just brought over. But I'll probably pull that one out and get it clean and replace it, or maybe go with no plant and just go with a rocky bottom and just make the fish just make the fish the, uh, the sort of star, star of the show here in this tank.
the 210 is now completely empty and despite moving what I suspect is a, maybe a, over 100 to 150 pounds of substrate, I still have quite a bit. So what I've done is I've decided to go ahead and leave the substrate that remains in here. It's, um, it's some Petco black sand, some aragonite, some Eco Complete. I'll just leave that in there. It's not gonna hurt anything. My KH is so low, it's probably gonna help. And then I'm gonna add some um, tan colored, some tan colored sand and some sort of tan and brown river rocks, very small river rocks, and then add that giant piece of driftwood to this tank. Then I'm gonna go over to the rock quarry that I featured in a prior video, and I'm gonna get some nice big round river rocks to uh, hold that piece of driftwood down. I'm gonna have to cut that driftwood so it'll fit, because it's not gonna fit otherwise. But then um, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get a substrate that is similar to the look I've got here. If you look at this substrate, you'll see tan and black and brown and white. You'll see a whole variety of colors. And I just love that, the way it looks. So ultimately, that's what I'm going for in the South American tank. And here are the South Americans. And Central Americans. I did a close-up on the Vieja and noticed that it, uh, he's got some pretty nice teeth coming in. <laughs> a little scary. Not sure if I'll be hand-feeding him too much. Red shoulders looking good. That's the most daring I've ever seen him. He must really be hungry. He's usually shy and hiding in the back. That's a Severum, a red shoulder Severum. Salvini back there guarding his pit or her pit. She stays, she goes in that cave and she's dug out that whole area to where you can actually see the bottom of the uh, aquarium. Jack Dempsey. Look at that chocolate with his eyes on the feeding hole. I have a little feeding hole up here that I drilled and the chocolate is right in position so we can attack it. If I put my hand up there, even without food, he'll start hitting the water real quick. There's that beautiful AC Hecali. They call him a, a thread fin. So he's got some trailing thread fins coming off the dorsal and off the tail with a little hint, uh, a little hint of red in those thread fins. Then a couple uh, Surrey Menensis, Geo Surrey Menensis. Here's the Nicaraguas. So the Nicaragua will go to the 210. The Jack Dempsey will go to the 210. I'll probably put the chocolates on the 210. Certainly the Vieja and the uh, Salvini. The Geophagus, the Red Shoulders, AC Heclis, they'll stay back in this tank. But this is the substrate I'm trying to get the look of in that 210. And it looks more tan in, per in person than it does on film, but there's a lot of tan in this, uh, in this sand. I'll be adding to the collection a, um, hopefully an Oscar, maybe a couple Oscars, Red Tiger, maybe a lemon, maybe an albino, and maybe a couple other nice South Americans. And I'll be growing them out and then moving on eventually to the 210. This guy will end up in the 210, of course. This is a green terror. He's become a little bit of a buddy with this large electric blue Acara. When I pull the uh, green terror out, I'll probably get the Acara, some more buddies, some more Acaras for him to hang out with. Looks like the fire mouth is actually out. Very rare occurrence. Normally the fire mouth is hiding.
Beautiful fish. Little rummy nails are doing great. I think in a day or two I'll transfer them over to the 29. Also the uh, keyhole cichlid that's living in here has been a lot more daring recently and swimming around coming up to the front of the glass. I've got a little pleco back there. You can see his tail behind the heater. All the baby plecos are doing great. There's a little albino. If you look at the substrate, you see a lot of movement. Black baby plecos against black substrate. Not the best combination for seeing them. But when I put a wafer in there, you'll see about 20 or 30 of them come out. Quite a few of them. There's a big one back there. Might be the dad. No, that's the mom. There's a bushy nose male in there with some very big whiskers. Obviously the dad. And then there's a female. And they've been breeding like crazy. So, <clears throat> kind of odd to see the 210 empty. But it won't be long before this project is done. This become and this will become a beautiful South American tank. And I'm sure the fish will appreciate all the extra swim room. Hey, don't be so shy, dude. You're beautiful. I know a lot of you like to look at the 29. I'm going to put it on a rack, so it's lined up with the 90. So it's not hidden back here. I hate the fact that it's out of view. The fish in it are doing so well. You can see the uh, laser, green laser quarries. A little group of three rummy nose, which is going to become a group of five. Red serpas, a lot of pagoda snails. Really good group of fish. Love that tank. We got Mr. Mustard over here. He'll probably come up to the front when he thinks I'm going to feed him. Here he comes. Hey, buddy. Say hi to everybody in the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. He says I should change it to Betta and Coffee. Betta and Beverages. All right. Here's an extra tank, a 29, that's going to go on that rack I'm going to put up. And then I've got a 60 gallon acrylic right here that's going to go onto that rack. If we go behind the uh, behind the 300, you can see all the plumbing is working perfectly from the uh, Synergy, Synergy Reefs overflow box down into the 40 gallon breeder. And the FX6 is working like a champ. I was thinking of cutting these hoses, shortening them for efficiency, but I may end up putting the FX6 underneath the cabinet, so I'm not sure I want to do that. And, but I tell you, I love the fact that it's out here because if I ever need to clean it, all I have to do is pull it out of that tote and move it here to the, to the left and just open the garage door and uh, drain it because the garage is sloped towards, towards the uh, exit, towards the door. So it'll be very easy to service this instead of having to lug it a long way to, to work on it. So that's going to make life a lot easier. So everything is working perfect back here. Fingers crossed. The tank is running at about 88 to 81 degrees with no heater on it. So I'm not going to bother with a heater. But as soon as it gets a little bit cool, I have uh, some real nice heavy duty heaters here. I've got a, uh, a real nice titanium heater from Heiger. And uh, this is the 902. I think it's about, uh, yeah, this is a 500 watt titanium heater. And it'll go in the, in the sump. And, and then I have uh, an 800 watt, also by Heiger. So the heating of this tank is going to be by Heiger. And this is one of those nice uh, double, double tube units, HG 
921, 800 watts, has a sensor, so if your water level goes down, it will shut off automatically. I was looking through some stuff and I found an old Inkbird controller. I might, I might plug them into this Inkbird. It's an old Inkbird uh, that I had laying around. I'm not sure what the model number is. Um, ITC 306T. If you know anything about the Inkbird ITC 306T, this is the one that I'll be using to uh, plug both these heaters into. And that's going to, uh, of course, if they're all running, this going to be a tremendous wattage uh, usage. So I'll, I'll uh, end up, I'm going to have a plug put in that's going to be um, actually a four prong plug that's going to be on its own circuit. So I'm not going to be worried about flipping, uh, you know, like circuit breakers and stuff and losing power. So this is running great. I did, as I mentioned in a prior video, I did have to cut a hole back here to get the uh, get the FX6 input output to uh, to fit, but that worked perfectly. Here's the side view. Kind of goes on forever with a seven foot tank. This tank was very cloudy yesterday before I started filming the uh, a Pyrogen video that I'm going to be releasing on Sunday. I did a video on Pyrogen and I had just put in all the extra substrate and it was very, very cloudy. Then I dropped three bags of Pyrogen into the sump down here and I filmed in time in time lapse. I filmed it. I filmed it actually getting uh, getting cleared up with the pyrogen. So it worked out great. You'll see that in a video on Sunday. So this is the 300 gallon, the biggest tank I've ever owned. Will probably be the biggest tank I ever own. I can't imagine putting anything bigger in here unless I do something on the wall behind me. I know uh, I spoke with glass cages one time about an eight foot tank as a possible discus tank, but that project would be a, a way a ways since I need to get this South American tank squared away first. So what do you think? I'm pretty pumped about the whole thing. I, I like the way it came out. It's still gonna be like all of my tanks, a work in progress. I'll always be uh, fine tuning and tweaking. And I think I might be putting a uh, Sunsun 704B that I have in storage. I'll probably be putting that on the 210 just to give it some additional uh, water polishing. Just run, just run pure sponges all the way through it. And, or maybe run that, uh, I have a big canister of Matrix Biomedia that was sent to me by mistake. I wanted, uh, I wanted Matrix Carbon and I got Biomedia and it was just more efficient just to keep it than to send it back. So I have that, that uh, quite a bit of Matrix. So maybe I'll put some of that in, the, uh, in that Sun Sun, in the bottom basket of the Sun Sun and use that. I, people that use it tell me it's a, it's a good product. So what do you think about the 300? I'll be uh, curious to hear your thoughts and suggestions and I will be adding some more cichlids. I know right now, as far as cichlid tanks go, it's not what you would call a heavily stocked tank or a uh, well-stocked tank. It's, uh, I like the combination of fish I have in there now. They're peaceful, they get along with each other, which is a good thing, you hate to disrupt it. But I do think a Fusco and uh, a Buchochromus notatania, right, and maybe a couple other uh, choice cichlids that James and I will, uh, will consider, we'll put them in there. So uh, there you have it. All right, let's get back to the live stream. All right, there you have it. <laughs> Thank you so much for that super chat, my friend. Uh, during, the during that video, somebody uh, jumped in with $20 from Exotic Plecos. Thank you, my friend. Very kind of you. And you are currently in the lead for your pick of any item at the, uh, at the, Teespring, at the Teespring store. Uh, if one of the moderators want to share that Teespring address, 
And let's see here. Love the music. When does dinner start from uh, my... <laughs> Your waiter will be with you in a minute. So, <laughs> Have you ordered drinks yet? <laughs> and be sure to look at the dessert menu. So uh, <clears throat> uh, GP was mentioning something about substrate. I'll tell you, I learned a lesson on having substrate that is uh, not necessarily jagged because when I was trying to catch the eye biter, so you can get that eye biter over here. Come here, buddy. There he is. Just a beautiful fish. Trying to catch that eye biter. Four times, he disappeared. And I mean, you're looking at him, and poof, there's a little bit of substrate, a cloud of substrate, and the eye biter is gone. Nowhere. You can't find him anywhere in the tank. And it is just that fast. It's like he's there, and poof, he's gone. You'll see on you'll see on the on the video. I I I, I I'll play it in slow motion. Um, when I finally post it, I'll play it in slow motion. He's there and he's not there. And then you got to go digging around. Sometimes his eye will be out. Sometimes a little piece of his tail is sticking out. So you got to find him and then, and then you know, coax them out of the sand. And, and But I'll tell you, if you had very, very sharp-edged, abrasive substrate, uh, there'd be no way that he, he wouldn't... Um, score you know like 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 scratch his eyes perhaps uh you know that he, he would probably end up uh with some kind of of an injury in 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 i imagine the eyes would be the most sensitive right diving down so fast and so hard and um it was just amazing to watch and and so i captured it as best as i could i was filming lengthwise on the on the tank on the 210 and and sort of chased him around with a I chased him around with a net, and then the other fish sort of photobombed it a little bit. But you can see he appears and disappears. And anyway, there's a reason they call him a uh, there's a reason that they call him a sand diver. All right, so let's see what you have to say here in the chat before I go any further. And I hope you like that video. This uh, when I was talking about how there's no metal on this. It has, I think, what is called a Euro brace, and if you look along, the top is just uh, a very thick uh, piece of glass that runs along the top and serves as a support frame, and then a section with a cutout where you put the the glass lids. So glass is 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 just it's just held together by glass. And uh, it, it's, I, I believe it's floated on a giant sheet of glass on the bottom. That's why the thing was so, so heavy. And uh, you can see the different types of glass along the top. We get into the bracing. You like here, if you can see this on the film, right, you get right here, you can see there's a piece of bracing right here. That's a piece that runs from the front to the back. And then you get the cross pieces. The cross pieces here. So there's one, two, three. Four cross braces going front to back, and then you got the cross. Then you got the ones that go across this way, and they create the squares where the glass lids drop in. And that's what's holding it together. And it's reinforced on the corners and on the bottom with with an extra strip of triangular, uh, a long triangular. It looks like a stir stick glass that's also put in place to give it more strength. What uh, glass cages does is they try to maximize the amount of uh, square inches of silicone, of adhesive. So when you do that kind of bracing, there's a tremendous amount of adhesive at work holding things together. Now, if you saw my water change video, you notice that I mentioned that unless I test out something unusual, I'm not doing the big 90% water changes. So I'm not forcing the silicone to expand and contract and expand and contract, which according to that master tank builder that I met in Ireland, the uh, that is what ultimately leads to tank failure. Probably even more so than having the tank slightly off level. 
So I have this tank perfectly level, and I'm only going to be doing water changes in this range. And unless there's a reason why I need to do something different. And of course, I'm, always, I'm, I'm testing the water. I do maybe once a month, twice a month, I'll test using those aquarium co-op strips. And they're very quick, very easy. And, you know, I trust Corey. He recommends them. And things have been going well using them. So, all right. So let's see here. I'm going to take a look here at the chat. And see if there's any questions that jump out at me. If you have any questions, ask them now. Chris G, looking huge. I'm not going to make any any uh, off-color jokes. Uh, <laughs> Davy Larson, Lake Ochart. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm under six feet. I I could I could get in this thing. And actually float around and uh, not recommended. I noticed there was somebody on the chat from Nepal, all the way from Nepal. I think that's awesome. Vicki from Houston, Texas. Hey, Vicki. Love Houston. Spent some time. She lived there one summer. Dave Rice in the house, my neighbor in East Tennessee. Uh, Tennessee is three states. We have Middle Tennessee, West Tennessee, and East Tennessee. Everybody thinks their Tennessee is the best. <laughs> All right, let's see here. I'm going through the chat. I'm cruising the chat. If you have some questions, go ahead and post them now. I will go ahead and take them up. Chris G., you need more fish. Yes, I, I do. I agree. Uh, Craig Duty in the house from Missouri. Hey, Craig. I want to get uh, uh, definitely a Fusco, and I definitely want to get that Bucochromos Notatania. What other fish do you think I should get that you think would be compatible with this group of fish? Now, keep in mind that if somebody were to say, put a Bicolor 500 in there, most people would say that's not going to work. If, pe if I told people I had a Lethronops Oculatus, this little guy here, most people would say that's not going to work. That's that's too docile, but it's working. So, uh, what do you recommend? What do you think I should put in here? And uh, don't be silly. Don't say piranha or shark. <laughs> Give me some ideas, and I'll start negotiating with my friend James over the signal check. Silver Creek, Silver Creek Aquarist. What a great name, Silver Creek Aquarist. Love that name. Ricky De Hoyos in the house. Hey, Brandon Wood. Ben, I'm growing out a Jalo Reef for you. I haven't forgotten. Three inches. Jalo Reefs are are one of the most beautiful fish. They are part of that Joka Free Freebrew family. I can't even pronounce it. They're they're uh, they can be jerks. All of the all of that family. Uh the Jalo Reefs, the Otter Points, right? Uh, they, they can have an attitude, but you put them in when they're a little bit smaller into a group like this, and his attitude will stay in check. Also, if you don't give him anything to claim, so if I was to get one of those from you, and I, pre I appreciate you thinking about me on that, if I was to get one of those from you, Brandon, it would be, uh, I'd put them in here after I remove the plant. So there's nothing to claim. There's no territory to claim. So it's all just free swimming. And I think that would that would work. Hey, Jerry has a 55-gallon tub from Tractor Supply. We're going to go buy some big tubs, Jerry, but we're going to use them for a vegetable garden. <laughs> but Tractor Supply is uh, that, that's a that's a fun place to go. If you're like me, you can spend all day there. All right, let's see here. GP. I think a lot of folks are using natural rock. I have a stream not too far from my house. I thought about picking up some rocks there. I am going to be going to that quarry that I mentioned in a prior video and picking up some nice big round uh, tan colored rocks uh, for two reasons. One, because I think they're beautiful and I and and they'll match the color of the of the substrate in the 210. 
but also because I need them to hold down that giant piece of driftwood. I am going to have to cut that driftwood up. It's just not going to fit as one piece, but it's still going to be beautiful. I'll, I'll set it up in a way so that we don't lose those beautiful angles and stuff in that piece of driftwood that I found at a local lake. It's been sitting out in the sunshine, getting rained on. Every now and then I'll go out there with a piece of sandpaper, give it a little bit of light sanding, knock off a little bit of bark, power power wash it a little bit. So it, I, I think it's pretty. It's going to be good to put into a tank, and I don't think it's going to have any, anything uh, weird living in it. I'm not sure how much tannin it'll release. Keep in mind, it was probably drifting and floating in that lake for a very long time because it's it's very soft in some parts you can tell it's eroded quite a bit so it might not release a lot of tannins we'll see but i'm going to need some heavy rocks to hold it down that's for sure Ricky De Hoyos i think Ben is half man half lethronops <laughs> Oh, where'd you come up with that, Ricky? <laughs> oh, boy. There is a guy on YouTube called Half Man, Half Cichlid. Check him out. He's got a 500-gallon tank. 500-gallon with a 100-gallon sump. Pretty impressive. I'm still scanning the chat. GP, that Heiger Ben showing is a... Uh, Though the Heiger, he, I like the Heiger heaters, and um, full disclosure, they actually sent me those, and I will be using them in this tank when things cool down a little bit. All fawns in the house, fish selection, exochromus, and, and genus. I love those exochromus. They're a little slow to grow. Um, and sh slow to show color, but they do have a beautiful pattern, and they would add a little bit of a unique gold-green color to the tank. So that's a good recommendation, Exo the Exochromis. I had some a while back that I ended up selling in California when I sold everything off before coming to Tennessee. I think I'd picked up that one from Cunningham Cichlids. Yeah, Chris G., uh, that piece of wood has been out there for over, I mean, when did I post that video on on, on you know, wild harvesting that piece of wood? I think it's been several months, or at least, yeah, maybe two months. And it was just laying there next to a lake, and I pulled it out, and I think it'll be great. Uh, the Toronto, uh, Chase, uh, Chase Dow says a uh, Toronto Chromis, Niagara Venter, a uh, I have to do a little more research on those. I mean, they can be very, very, uh, uh, very aggressive. I think they were, they were classified at one point as a nimbochromus, weren't they? Then they got reclassified into their own category, but uh, and they can get very large. They're sort of like the uh, there's there's a type of buccochromus lepters, buccochromus lepters, beautiful, but would they get too too aggressive now? Again, if I got one that was maybe in the four to five inch category and have them come into the tank and be in a very subdominant position and then sort of grow up in that in that position doesn't mean that they wouldn't try to take control. Right now, who's the boss in this tank? If I had to pick one, it it, it it's believe it or not, it's gonna be a, a toss up between the uh Tangerine Tiger and and the Autopharynx Tetrastigma sometimes can actually assert himself. At some point, I imagine this beautiful trout is probably going to uh, assert himself when he wakes up one morning and goes, hey, wait a minute, I'm the biggest dude here. I'm going to take over because he's going to get up to about 14 inches, maybe bigger. Dave Rice, I'm having a 285-gallon acrylic being built. Whoa, 90-gallon sump. Going to do dwarf mabuna. Well, uh, Dave, you know I'm going to suggest uh, the Cichlid Shack. Check with them, see if they have them. 
And be sure to use your Shack Attack 15 discount code. M and C Aquatics. As peaceful as those are, you could add a red shoulder or a frontosa. I know frontosa is a tangenican, so not sure. And I know tanfrontosa like to be in a species-specific tank that's a little bit dimly, like a little bit less light. So I'm not sure if I throw a frontosa in here, but I love front. I love fronts. I love how peaceful they are. It's like watching a discus tank. And but a red shoulder. Red shoulders are beautiful. I had one in California. Ended up giving it to, uh, or including it uh, with the sale of a tank to Kevin Green, one of our moderators who comes by from time to time. Gus Frazier loves that Malawi hawk. Yeah, he's a cool fish. He's uh, just such an odd, odd look, you know, that, that, and then the way they hunt, the way they get, they hover and then go sideways and look at things like on their side and then drop down. They're a little bit like the eye biter. They're, they, they're sort of death from above, right? They're an ambush predator that comes above, goes sideways to get a good look, and then will dive bomb and, and, and eat baby Mabuna or anything can fit in its mouth. The um, different from, let's say, the gar, who has those beautiful big lips, they love to go sideways and get between rocks and get, get a hold of fry or, you know, crustaceans or anything they can get a hold of, they turn on their side and they get in there and really work that mouth. They really push it in. That's why they have such a developed jaw and, and lips. I imagine being a cousin of the eye biter that the... Um, any... Did did Dimmy Dimmy Acromas, Didi Acromas, however you pronounce it, like the Spectabilis, I imagine they would also dive bomb on their prey. Hey Denny. Denny is in the house. Boynton Cichlids, good afternoon to you as well, all the way from Florida. GP, Frontosa, like very high pH. This tank, believe it or not, is running uh, in the mid-7s. I just can't get it much higher. And I'm not going to be using chemicals, but as you can see, the fish have adapted well to the situation. And we'll see. I don't want to use pH up. I don't want to use um, things like that, any kind of buffering type chemical that but the fish seem to be doing okay at about 7.5. The uh, KH is, is a bit low, and that's why I added so much crushed coral and aragonite, hoping to, with the massive release of calcium and magnesium, that I could probably get a better KH. It has been working. It's moved me from low to low-medium KH. For those of you who've just come on and who haven't seen the chat pin message, the biggest uh, chat today will have their pick of any item at the uh, at the Teespring store. And we have one person in the lead right now with a $20 super chat. Doesn't mean you can't do a super chat just to do a super chat. But if you do have the biggest super chat, you will get your pick of items from, from uh, the Teespring store, one item of your choice. The Barrick Aquatics in the house. Good looking tank. Good, th great job. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate that. Miguel Espinosa, tri schooling fish, silver dollars, Romanos. I've heard that they work okay with cichlids and can work as a dither fish. So a fish that can distract fish and uh, reduce aggression. Worth considering. I like the red hooks. Red hook, is that what they're called? Red hook silver dollars. So their lower fin has a bit of red in it. I think those are very pretty. Certainly that would be uh, something to include in that South American tank. Yeah, Danny, uh, someone else suggested a Tyrannochromis. Uh, Just not sure how, how crazy that fish would get. And uh, but 
I wouldn't mind trying one and just putting them in at about four inches, maybe uh, between four and five inches, and have him be a smaller subdominant fish, and then just see how how he comes along. My what what's led to the success in this tank is that when a fish has shown uh, a bit of uh, craziness, I've immediately pulled them out and just not messed around. The only time I've messed around and the only time I've, I've regretted it is when I've waited too long, which I did admittedly with that dragon blood and that Eureka red. Uh, I just waited too long and, and, and fish suffered because of it. So moving them out quickly, that's been my, my success What's, what's helped add to the success of a relatively peaceful South American tank. Tiberic Aquatics, Congo Tetras will be going into that, uh, into one of my tanks. I just love them. And uh, James Largo at the Cichlochak, I think just got a, a, a big, a big shipment of albino Congo Tetras. Crazy looking fish. And of course, I'm looking for albino, uh, albino threadfin, AC Hecali or threadfins. I'm looking for some albinos. Those are just stunning, stunning fish. Hey, Sharpie is in the house. Sharpies, fish, and phantoms. Phantoms? Should I be scared? <laughs> All right, let's see here. Any other comments, any other questions? Let's go ahead and throw them at me now. While you're thinking of a question, I'm going to have another sip. For those of you who are wondering, there is no alcohol in my coffee. And while on the subject, you folks want to have another some cichlids and suds. Would you like to have another one of those? I'm thinking about, uh, if not this coming Wednesday, the next Wednesday at, uh, we'll probably do it at uh, 7 p.m. So I don't conflict with... Uh, Jason over at Primetime Aquatics. Does that appeal to you? Would you like to see a cichlids and suds? Let me know in the in the chat and we'll schedule one. Just something different, just to kind of shake things up a little bit. And uh, all right, let's see here. Ricky De Hoyos, not sure if that yes is for cichlids and suds. All right. So what time is it? We are almost on the hour. So it looks like, as far as I can tell, let me scan back through here. It looks like... Scanning through the chat, Exotic Plecos 13 is in the lead with the biggest super chat, Exotic Plecos 13. If you do end up with the biggest super chat today, please send me your full name and, and uh, mailing address. I don't know if I'll need a mail. We can do it electronically. But just go ahead and email me at ben.o.cichlid at gmail.com. Ben.o.cichlid. If you have the biggest super chat today, and I will get you information on how to pick your item. James Green, Cichlids and Sud, 7 p.m. is good. Okay. That's 7 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern. That's 5 p.m. Pacific time. Trenton W. comes in with a super chat. Thank you, my friend. Very nice of you. I appreciate the support to the channel. 
I'll tell you, without the support of your Super Chats, of your subscribing and watching the videos, and of course, my uh, Garage Gang, my Patreon supporters, information on Patreon is in the description. Without that, this would not be possible because it is a, um, even though I do have supporters, full disclosure, I get stuff sent to me, but there's still a big gush of cash that has to go out for the things that supporters don't send. And it's your help that's allowed me to do that. So I really appreciate that, my friends. So uh, with that being said, I know some of you have asked, am I going to uh, Dallas? And I will not be at Aquashella in Dallas or Chicago. I, I think I'm going to make Orlando my annual, because it's relatively close. It gives me time to save money between trips. So I'll probably go to the Orlando Aquashella. And uh, that'll be my go-to. I didn't make it to the uh, the Cichlid Association meeting in Kentucky as much as I wanted to. Three-hour drive. Uh, I was just right in the middle of launching this tank, and the timing was just bad. But if you're not familiar with the American Cichlid Association, uh, the ACA, check it out. It's a good group. I'm a member and supporter. And I, uh, I'll, I'll try and make one of their meetings if I can. And they do, uh, they do things like to they they help to restore waterways and protect waterways and you know, stuff like that. They 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 work on good things. They do breeding projects for endangered fish. Anyway, good group ACA American Cichlid Association. Chase comes in with a super, super chat. Chase Dow, thank you, my friend. I appreciate that. I appreciate the support. So that being said, I hope you folks enjoyed uh, today's introduction to uh, this monster tank. And stay tuned for fish that will be getting added. And, of course, stay tuned for what's going to be occurring with the 210. I'm going to be adding a very large amount of uh, beige and tan sand to that tank and mix together with the black and white that's in there already. I'm hoping to get a particular kind of color combination. And then I'll be, of course, adding that giant piece of driftwood. And then we'll be moving over the more aggressive fish, the Nicaragua, the Jack Dempsey, the Vieja, probably the Chocolates, definitely the Salvini. Those will be going in the 210. And then I'll be uh, eventually, of course, I'll also bring it over the green tear after they put on some size. I'll probably bring the green tear over to the uh, 90. I'd love to see that uh, electric blue Akara in the 90, but we'll see what I'm going to do with him. He's a very peaceful fish. And just a gorgeous fish, very active. Was very shy at first. Now he's very interactive, comes up to the glass and greets me. Very aggressive going after the food. Of course, that uh, fire mouth is going to get moved over to the 55 with the green tear. So we'll see how that dynamic works. I'll pull out the uh, I'll pull out the rummy noses and the keyhole and and a cichlid. Put them in the 29, and then use that 55 to uh, as a hospital tank for new cichlids. So there you have it. I think you're up to date. I really appreciate you folks spending an hour with me on Sunday. And again, thank you, Chase, and to all of you who did Super Chats, Trenton W, and of course, Exotic Plecos 13. Thank you, everybody, for your support. It is very appreciated. And uh, if you like the content, be sure to subscribe. Give the tank a, uh, give the, give the, uh, give the tank, <laughs> give the tank and give the channel, give it a thumbs up, give the video a thumbs up, and subscribe if you can. Oh, we have a new leader. Davey Larson comes in with a $35 super chat. We thought exotic, we were already giving uh, exotic Pleco 13 a high five, and uh, and Davey snatches it at the finish line. Anyway, very, very cool, very, very cool. Thank you, my friend. So Davey Larson, you are the leader right now. And if you end up 
as the biggest super chat today, be sure to send me an email, ben.o.cichlid at gmail.com, and we will make arrangements to get you whatever you like, an item of your choice, from the uh, from my Teespring store. Now, you know what I'm thinking? I might even be able to customize it. Maybe customize an item. Like create a sweatshirt that has your name on it or a tee that has your name on it. Something like that. We can talk about it in the email. So there you go. So that's it for now, my, my friends. And uh, I think we're going to go ahead and end off with that. You folks are the best. You rock. Watch for the time-lapse Purigen video uh, tomorrow at 7. It'll post tomorrow at 7 a.m. Watch for a couple cichlid profiles I've been trying to, uh, dying to do but haven't been able to. And what else is coming up? And watch for an update on the 210. That's my next exciting project. Some of you have been asking about discus fish. Uh, discus are still in my mind. It would have to be a very large tank that goes against the wall where I would or where, where I have the 255 gallon tanks, possibly a seven or eight feet wide, narrow, tall tank. Uh, Joe and I uh, over at glass cages were kind of throwing the idea around. That would be something. All right, my friends. I'll let you go enjoy your uh, your weekend. Mountaintop Puffer Keeper. What a great name. All right, everybody. That's it for me. You rock. You are the best. And let's go ahead and uh, with that, go ahead and end off. Goodbye for now. Love you guys and gals. Bye-bye.